Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, today, I'm going to cover a new story coming out of Activision Blizzard. And this story uh, is kind of, I don't know, it kind of hits home for me because I, I've been a big fan of and I played uh, Vanilla WoW, uh, World of Warcraft, for, for many, many years. Uh, I was in a raid. We did a lot of uh, – I was in a guild. We did a lot of raiding and online gaming. And I, I met a really great group of friends on there that I kept in contact with for years, even after we stopped playing the game. So, you know, for – I think at the time I was around 30. I don't remember exactly when, when WoW came out. But it's been out for a, a long, long time. Well – World of Warcraft, Activision, Blizzard, they've had their problems with um, treating women poorly at the workplace. Oh, I forgot to set up my window capture here. Let me do that. Um, they've, they've had some problems with uh, treating women poorly, and they, they call it like a frat atmosphere. Um, although a lot of frat guys I know would probably treat women better than they were treated at Blizzard. And then, of course, the acquisition with Microsoft and everything like that. Well, the the... the the, the problem is that there's, they're snapping back. They're going too far in the other direction, and now they're dedicating uh, positions, job positions, to women and binary people only. And the, the reason – I don't have problems with – you know, if a company says – and again, I, I, the company I used to work for said we'd love to find women to, to fill these roles. Not many women are, are network engineers. So I have no problems, and, and we – we're very excited to interview a woman for the position. However, at the end of the day, we still selected the best person for the position. And, you know, there were times where we were kind of like, ah, it sucks. You know, having a couple more women around just to see the world through a different set of eyes and experiences and to treat customers differently and whatever, uh, that would probably be a good thing because we were out of a team of, I think, close to 23 guys at one point. We had one female. Um, and she was a senior uh, tech lead who had been with the company for 20 years. So, you know, when you're when you are very, very um, one direction, you can say, hey, you know what, let's open this up a little bit. So I don't want any of what I'm about to say sound like I'm against women coming into video games or network or anything else. But the problem is when you start saying, hey, we're only going to hire out of this group of people. That means that the talented people, the people that have worked hard, the people that have done well in life, the people that, that push to be the best of the best of the best are passed up. And there's a whole bunch of losers when that happens. And I'll tell you who it is. Number one, the losers are the customer. It means the product's going go to go to crap. The product's going to go to hell. It's not going to be any good. And the gaming community or people that enjoyed previous products from this company, they lose. Who else loses? Anybody else that owns this stock and the company itself loses. Why? Because you don't have the best of the best putting good product out there and your sales will suffer and people will realize it. And the word gets around and you can call these people hateful or misogynist or whatever. But the truth is, once this gets out there, they're going to say, look, you can say I'm whatever. But the reason why I'm not buying it is it's a crap product because, again, you're not hiring the best. You're filling slots that meet certain diversities. Well, here's the main story. I've got two stories. Only one of them can I read here on YouTube. The other one I can't because it's got so many buzzwords and other things that YouTube will just take my video and yeet it into oblivion. But from uh, IGN, and this is from April 12th, just uh, yesterday, I think, yeah. Activision Blizzard's new diversity chief wants to expand diversity in the office and in games. And, and you're going to see where... This is going to affect now because if Activision does this, you know, other companies, if they get pressured, will probably fall in line, which means gaming may just go to crap, which will really tick me off because it's one of my favorite hobbies. They say uh, Activision Blizzard's currently facing serious ongoing allegations of giving women hard time and mistreatment of marginalized workers. Those marginalized, marginalized workers were basically female. Uh, and they say to learn more, here's a link. Um, they say they have a new chief diversity, equity, and inclusion officer, and they have some lofty ambitions. Those buzzwords right there will tell you everything you need to know about what's coming up for it. When you say 
the, our, I have lofty ambitions for the hiring and filling certain slots of certain people for this company. You're, you've basically thrown talent and, and creativity and hard work out the window. That's all there is. Now you can choose the hardest working and best of these individuals. But again, when you have a hundred applicants and in this kind of, uh, you know, uh, gaming and programming and things like that, 80 to 90% are men. So if you say, we're not even going to look at them now, you're you, now you've only got 10% to choose from. And even if those 10% were the best, you're going to have to fill a lot of roles with people that probably aren't as talented and time will tell time will tell, but, um, we, we know how this has turned out in other things. Kristen Hines will join Activision Blizzard from April 25th, 2022, and already has her sights set on increasing the number of women and non-binary employees by 50%. I'm excited to join a company that is prioritizing its commitment to uh, die, uh, diversity, inclusion, and equity, and making progress on the ambitious goals that is set for itself, she said in an official statement. In an industry with historical underrepresentation, I'm looking forward to leading the company's efforts to further build a workplace that values transparency, equity, and inclusivity. Now, the reason why, uh, the reason why this the reason why there's historical underrepresentation is because not a lot of women are programmers. Not a lot of women are into computers. Not a lot of women are into gaming. Now, yes, there are more and more women getting into gaming, but still compared to the group of men that do it, it is a small percentage. Why? They've done studies on this in Norway and Sweden. Women like to work with people. They like to work with emotion. They like to work with interactivity. Men like to work with things. They like to work with numbers and engineering and being analytical. Less emotion, more raw thought. It's just how we're hardwired. And I did a video on this, but it boils all the way back to the womb. When a baby is being formed, if there's a lot of testosterone present, whether it comes out male or female, because there can be more testosterone uh, and less testosterone, testosterone, but it that doesn't necessarily correlate to the birth of the child. They found that women that had high testosterone levels in the womb came out and liked to do technical, analytical, more male, typically male type things. And males that came out, but they had more um, less testosterone in the womb, they had a tendency to be more sensitive and be more interacting with women and wanting to, to uh, do more sensitive jobs, jobs with feelings, jobs interacting with other people. It had nothing to do with the gender. It had to do with something that happened in the womb. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going on here, but what I'm saying is most of the time, men like being analytical and working with math and sitting in front of a computer and programming things. So when they say it's been underrepresented, it's not because they're not letting women into the gaming world. It's because women traditionally have not wanted to participate that there are other activities they would rather do, like working with kids and working with the elderly and being nurses and things like that. And if you don't believe it, just look at history. If you go back to long before women were working, men took a lot of those roles. Why did women start doing some of this stuff, right? So they say uh, uh, Activision has confirmed Heinz will play, play a crucial role in the company's efforts to increase the number of women and non-binary employees in its workforce over the next five years. Gaming has amazing potential to connect communities around the world and showcase heroes from all backgrounds, she added. I'm looking forward to playing a part in expanding the landscape of talent who brings these compelling experiences to a broad base of players. What she's basically saying here is, hey, here come, here comes all the storylines and all the, the different brands and all the inclusivity. And if you say, well, that's actually a good thing. Let me rewind you a little bit. You know, when you go back and look at the movies like Alien and Aliens that had uh, Sigourney Weaver in there uh, playing Ripley, she was an amazing, badass, like, main character. She was tough, and yeah, she showed a little fear. She showed human emotion, but at the end of the day, she got it done. She beat the aliens. She was a great female lead, but you notice that she didn't talk about relationships. She didn't talk about her feelings. She didn't talk about her love for her other, I don't know, female 
pilot or what, there was no romance. It was just an action movie. But when you're coming out and you're saying, hey, we need to let you know that someone like maybe Sigourney Weaver also loves women. Well, how do you tie that into a storyline? If you go back and look at the original Alien movies, I mean, other than one part where I think uh, in Aliens 2 or 3 or whatever it was, uh, where they mentioned she had a kid, you didn't know. Maybe she was. Maybe she did like women. Maybe she didn't. Who cares? Who knows? Because they didn't bring it up. But the minute you say, well, we've got to tell this story to make sure you understand the character, now you're starting to bring in the romance or the one-liners about her girlfriend or all this other stuff. And, and it's not the problem that that's in the story. The problem becomes that is the story. That is the game. Just look at The Last of Us 2. That thing, a lot of people said, hey, great game. Um, from everything that I saw about it, it was an absolute train wreck. So I'm not against women coming into this, but what happens is when you start saying, we've got to share their stories. We've got to make sure you understand the stories of these characters. We don't care. We don't care. Um, and they, uh, Activision Blizzard has ambitious, ambitious goals to become the most welcoming and inclusive company in the gaming industry, said CEO Bobby Kotick. We have already made significant progress ensuring the safety and well-being of our employees, and we are excited to have Kristen join our leadership team to help drive even greater improvement. Now, this is obviously a snapback uh, coming back against the allegations that they had against them. They say, uh, but with Heinz appointment, it will hopefully go some way towards addressing these issues. It looks though, as though Activision Blizzard still has a long way to go. Now, who is this person that they're bringing in? Well, uh, she, Kristen Hines, Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer. That position, as far as I'm concerned, is a BS position. It's somebody coming in and, and running their finger over everything, making sure that the message, the message is getting out there and that all brands have to make sure that you've got this number of this and this number. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if the game is good or not. Doesn't matter if the story is good. We just need to make sure all this different grouping is, is represented. And if you really went and said, okay, we want to make sure rep representation is correct. If you pulled up a list and you went down and, and saw what the population was and it says X amount Caucasian, X amount uh, Hispanic or, or Latino, X amount um, black, X amount gay, X amount trans. If you went down and did that, then you'd realize only about one character out of a hundred would be in certain one of these quotas. But you know it's going to be 30% or 40%. It's going to be way over representation. And the problem with that is not necessarily that they're there. It's not that they're being represented. It's that we're going to have to be beaten over the head being told about this representation and that becomes storylines and that becomes and, and matter of fact they even say it here Kristen Hines has served chief diversity equity blah 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 since 20 April 22 she just got hired uh, she implements programs and policies that foster a diverse equitable and inclusive I, I like it the other way diverse inclusive and equitable because then it spells D-I-E which is pretty much what it's going to do to the gaming atmosphere Workplace environment partners across all game teams to ensure a diverse and inclusive perspectives, including including storylines, character development, gameplay, and community interaction. That's everything. That's everything. And if you don't feel like you just say, you know something, can I for once watch a movie without worrying about this stuff? You know, uh, when whether you watch, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of another good older uh, movie. Um, Lethal Weapon. And that was with Danny Glover and Mel Gibson. You didn't look at that and say, hmm, did, I didn't. So there's a black partner and he's married, but there's a single white guy and he's single, but he's hooking up. No, we don't care. Just, just tell the story. Just tell the, just give us a movie. But now it's, hey, let's explain this person's background, even though it doesn't fit with anything in the, in the storylines. Let's do some, and they're going to do the same thing with these, with characters in video games. Make sure that you can choose 72 different selections for when you're making your person. Uh, and they talk about what she did before here. Um, here's the thing. And, and again, I'm going to, I've got this last article I'm going to read uh, for the, my locals crew 
Uh, so if, if you're not a member or a supporter, go over there, please. It's like five bucks a month, uh, $4 a month if you sign up for a year of supporting me. I, I'm looking for 300, I wrote it down, 323 more supporters I need, and that will be enough I can pay all my bills. And then if YouTube eats me, uh, YouTube will become gravy instead of my actual income. Um, so please consider uh, uh, supporting me today. Um, I've got an article here that I want to read and talk about, but I can't do it here on YouTube because, you know, too many buzzwords and, and they'll destroy the video. So make sure to join me over there if you're here on YouTube.